Hi there. So let's get into Revelation chapter 8 today. And we'll um, get into Revelation unveiled by Tim LaHaye after that. Okay, let's jump over there. Well, just read it. Hmm? Now they're breaking the seventh seal. This is the last seal on the, the scroll, which is the deed to the earth. Hmm? And this is a big one. And it only gets worse from here. When the line broke the seventh seal on the scroll, there was a silence throughout heaven for about a half an hour. Okay, this doesn't usually happen in heaven. I mean, all you hear in heaven is is continuous singing and praising. And it was quiet, a very ominous silence. <clears throat> I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and they were given seven trumpets. Now these are the archangels. Gabriel is one of them. Then another angel with a gold with a gold incense burner came and stood at the altar, and a great amount of incense was given to him to mix with the prayers of God's people as an offering on the gold altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense mixed with the prayers of God's holy people ascended up to God from the altar where the angel had poured them out. The angel filled the incense burner with fire from the altar and threw it down upon the earth, and thunder crashed, lightning flashed, and there was a terrible earthquake. Okay. This doesn't really get into who this this other angel was. Some people think it was Jesus. It wasn't. Jesus is not an angel. Okay. Okay. And then the first four trumpets that they were given. <clears throat> Then the seven angels with the seven trumpets prepared to blow their mighty blasts. The first angel blew his trumpet, and hail and fire mixed with blood were thrown down to the earth. One third of the earth was set on fire. One third of the trees were burned, and all of the green grass was burned. You think there's a lot of fires now. The second angel blew his trumpet, and the great mountain of fire was thrown into the sea. One third of the water in the sea became blood. One third of all living things in the sea died, and one third of all the ships on the sea were destroyed. <clears throat> then the third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from the sky, burning like a torch. It fell on one third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star was Bitterness. What's that footnote? Wormwood. <laughs> It made one third of the water bitter, and many people died from drinking the bitter water. Wow. Then the fourth angel blew his trumpet. One third of the sun was struck, and one third of the moon, and one third of the stars, and they became dark. And one third of the day was dark, and also one third of the night. Wow. Then I looked, and I heard a single eagle crying loudly as it flew through the air. Terror, 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 or whoa, 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 is the literal translation. To all who belong to this world because of what will happen when the last three angels blow their trumpets. <laughs> wow, a warning. Well, that's, <clears throat> that's Revelation 8. I mean, they're getting into it now. Now let's jump over to... Oh, so this is very long. Okay, he goes into great detail, and I'm not going to cover all of it because... He just he covers a lot of stuff here. Okay. okay, we already know we've already been seeing that the seven seals scroll represents the title deed to the earth, but it also contains the awful future that awaits those who reject the Lamb of God and who came to take away the sin of the world. The opening of the first five seals reveals the activities of humankind, bringing about great miser mis misery on the earth. The opening of the sixth seal seems to be God's reaction against the people for their cruel persecution of His saints. The opening of the seventh seal introduces the seven trumpet judgments, <clears throat> which are all judgments of God sent on the earth. In these judgments, God is exclusively the sender, and people are exclusively receivers. These judgments are so terrible that the angels stand breathless in wonder. Would to God that those today who easily, who so easily reject Jesus Christ would stand still and heed the voice of God, they too would be silent if they knew the horrible doom of judgment that is coming upon this earth because people are rejecting God's Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. True. <clears throat> now, the seven angels. As the seventh seal is broken, the seven angels receive trumpets. 
Since covenant between the Antichrist and Israel will start the tribulation and the first seal is the Antichrist, the first six seals cover the first 21 months of the tribulation. The breaking of the seventh seal may very well occur at the close of the 21st month. Yeah. It introduces the second quarter or the seven trumpets. Okay, and then he, then he covers what we read here. Trumpets. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and then were given seven trumpets. Right. The opening of the seventh seal does not cause the seven seven angels to stand before God. Apparently, they are always there, awaiting a special assignment from their Creator. The opening of the seal results in each one being given a trumpet that would be blown in proper sequence, introducing stop it a future form of judgment. One of these seven seal one of these seven angels is the angel Gabriel. We learned this from Luke one nineteen. For when he dis, for when he appeared to Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, he said, I am Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God. We find the same angel sent to God to bring a message to the prophet Daniel. Since Gabriel has been named as one of the seven angels who stand before God, carrying out his bidding to humankind, it may be that the other six serve the same purpose, though we have no scripture to identify them. Worship in heaven. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer. That's where we read that. Okay. The description of another angel taking the golden censer with incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar present us with a beautiful picture that the prayers of God's people continually go up before him. These prayers, like prayers of the saints under the alt altar in 6 9, are are probably the prayers that have been kept in heaven awaiting this very day for 2,000 years. And he's talking about the prayers that are filled in the alt in the bowl with incense. Action takes place in heaven but causes a response on earth. A thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. All of this signifies that the human race is about to feel a hot blast of God's wrath. Who is this other angel? And he talks about her. Um, a lot of people said, you know, it's some people think it's Jesus, but it's not Jesus. So we won't get into all that. And he goes into reasons why it's not Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Then the angel took the censer filled with fire from the altar and hurled it on the earth, and there came peals of thunder, rumblings, and flashes of a great earthquake. That's what we read in eight five. The thunderclaps, lightnings, and the earthquake are the result of the fire from the altar indicating that the action of heaven initiates a responsive action on earth. As the prayers of the saints for vengeance are taken from the altar, there are frightening sounds, flashes of light, and an earthquake on the earth, introducing the fact that the seven angels are about to sound their trumpets. Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. Eight six. <clears throat> are the trumpets judgments? Literal judgments. Okay, I believe they are. And he goes into reasons why they are literal judgments, like the plagues of Egypt were literal. Yeah. And here's where it starts. The first angel sounded, <coughs> sounded his trumpet, and there came a hail, and hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down upon the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all of the green grass was burned up. All of the green grass. Wow. That was 8-7. The hail and fire are literal judgments that fall on one third of the earth's surface, burning up all the vegetation they light on. It should not strike us as strange that this literal cataclysm for such things have happened before. God rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah. And as we have already seen, <coughs> Egypt's water turned to blood. In fact, just such a disaster was predicted on for the earth immediately prior to the day of the Lord. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and pillows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That was in Joel. Okay. It's the first trumpet. Burns up a third of everything. And the second angel sounded his trumpet. And something like a huge mountain, all the blaze was thrown into the sea. Okay. okay. A third of the sea turned to blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea that and a third of the ships were destroyed. So, a biblical allusion to the sea usually refers to the sea that was prominent in the land of, of 
Palestine, the Mediterranean Sea, which appeared to John as a as a huge mountain, is probably a giant burning meteorite that falls into the Mediterranean Sea, killing a third of the living creatures and destroying one third of the ships. The result of that death and the chemical composition of the meteorite turned the water to blood. That's what he says. There certainly would be an ample supply of ships in the Mediterranean Sea, since this is the permanent home of the U.S. Sixth Fleet, plus represent plus representative fleets from many other countries of the world, since Revelation 18 indicates that Babylon would be rebuilt and become the commercial center of the world, there will no doubt be several hundred ships on the sea when the meteorite falls, adding further devastating details to the time of tribulation. Mm -hmm. It's a second trumpet. <laughs> well, the third trumpet. The third angel sounded his trumpet in a great st star, blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of and on a third of the rivers and a third of the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Mm -hmm. The third trumpet judgment introduces us to a burning torch that visibly falls from heaven, indicating that it is another meteorite. It must bury itself so deep at just the right spot that it pollutes the water supply of a third of the world's rivers. Evidently, there is a place on Earth where the headwaters of the three great rivers come together. When this wormwood meteorite strikes that place, it will embitter great rivers, and those who are dependent on them will die. I would guess up north somewhere, most of the rivers flow down. Yeah, well. They're messing up the Earth, huh? The fourth trumpet. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck. A third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark, and a third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. The fourth trumpet deals with the luminous bodies as they affect this earth. On the first day of creation, God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And on the fourth day, He created the sun, moon, and stars. The same God who created a light in the first place is able to diminish it to one third. Actually, day and night will seem to be reversed, for there will be 16 hours of darkness and 8 hours of daylight. This corresponds to the ninth plague of Egypt. And the prediction of our Lord in Luke 21, 25, and 26, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars on the earth. Nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Our finite minds can hardly fathom the tremendous forces that will be unleashed on the, on the earth as a result of the blowing of this fourth trumpet. The warning angel. And this is the last part we heard. You know, As I watched, I heard an angel, I heard an, an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. You'd think the first four were bad. <clears throat> this verse inter introduces us to the three woes of the book of Revelation, which in turn inform us that as horrible as the first four trumpets have been, they will be surpassed in misery by that which is to follow. The rebellion of human beings against God strangely gets progressively worse. Aware that they have sinned against God and are in the midst of judgment placed on them by the Lamb, they know they cannot stand in the great day of their wrath. Revelation 6.17 Yet they persist in their stubborn self-will against God. This clearly answers the question often asked by people, will there be a second chance after death? My answer is always the same. What good would that do? People would make the same decision a second time. <laughs> yeah. The warning of Revelation 8.13, sounded by a special angel, threatens that worse things are yet to come. The three woes of the tribulation period are actually the fifth, sixth, and seventh trumpet judgment. The seventh, the seventh trumpet introduces the last half of the tribulation, or the bold judgments. The seventh trumpet and the third woe then are synonymous. The first woe, or fifth trumpet, for they are the same, covers five months. The second woe, or sixth trumpet, covers a similar period. Even a casual reading of the 5th, 6th, and 7th trumpet judgments will acquaint the reader with the fact that they are distinguished from the previous judgments, judgments since they predict such an increase in the destructive powers to be unleashed on humanity 
Some say aptly describe this period as hell let loose on earth. So, and that's the first four trumpets. That's Revelation 8, okay? Revelation 9 starts the fifth trumpet, and we'll get into that tomorrow. Hey, okay, but and there's a lot of stuff going on. Just in a, in a few months. <clears throat> we'll go back and cover 8 again. Now that we've kind of familiarized ourselves with everything going on. When the Lamb broke the seventh seal on the scroll, there was a silence out in heaven for about a half an hour. I saw seven angels who stand before God, and they were given seven trumpets. Then another angel with a gold incense burner came and stood to the, at the altar. And, the great amount of, and a great amount of incense was given to him to mix with the prayers of God's people as an offering on the gold altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense mixed with the prayers of God's holy people ascended up to God from the altar where the angel had poured them out. Then the angel filled the incense burner with fire from the altar and threw it down upon the earth and thunder crashed, lightning flashed, and there was a terrible earthquake. <clears throat> you think that would shake some people up, huh? The first four trumpets. Then the, then the seven angels with seven trumpets prepared, prepared to blow their mighty blasts. The first angel blew his trumpet, and hail and fire mixed with blood and were thrown down to the earth. One third of the earth was set on fire, one third of the trees were burned, and all of the grass was burned. Hmm? All of the grass. The second angel blew his trumpet, and a great mountain of fire was thrown into the sea. Now this could be a, um, you know, could easily be a volcano. There's lots of those around. No. You know, or a meteorite. I mean, that already talks about a star falling, which I think is a meteorite. So that, that could be a volcano. I mean, there's been volcanoes that have completely destroyed things. Okay. One third of the water in the sea became blood. One third of all living, all things living in the sea died. And one third of all the ships on the sea were destroyed. Okay. Now, Tim LaHaye talked about this being the Mediterranean Sea, which is the main sea in the area at the time, but, you know, it could be the whole world. Hmm. Then the third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from the sky, burning like a torch. This would be a, me this would be a meteorite. It fell on one-third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star was Bitterness, or Wormwood. It made one... It made one third of the water bitter, and many people died from drinking the bitter water. Okay. Now, this sense it will poison all the rivers tells you it might, you know, like Tim Lay said, it might embed itself deep underground, you know, somewhere in the north where, you know, most of the water comes from the high mountains and goes down, and that's where the water supplies come from. If you destroy that, you poison everything. So, yeah. Then the fourth angel blew his trumpet. One third of the sun was struck, and one third of the moon, one third of the stars, and they became dark. And one third of the day was dark, and also one third of the night. Mm -hmm. So that's two thirds. So yeah, it will be 16 hours of darkness and eight hours of light. Then I looked and heard a single eagle crying, crying loudly as it flew through the air. Terror, terror, terror to all those who belong to this world because of what will be happen when the last three angels blow their trumpets. Like fifth trumpet, sixth trumpet, seventh trumpet. And it will only get worse. So that's Revelation 8. We will start 9 tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> the first fifth trumpet brings the first terror. So it's 8, a little shorter today. It was eight and nine together was, was too much to cover in one session, so we're going to break them up into two sections. And tomorrow we'll start nine. But you get into this. I certainly don't want to be around when this is happening, so pray that we'll already be up there. Um, until then, keep reading, keep praying, believe in the Lord while you can. See you next time.